Hey guys, my name is Justin, uh, and this is my 2015 Mitsubishi Lancer GT. Not the Evo, but the Lancer GT. Uh, I got this car bone stock. I'm the first owner uh, back in 2015, end of 2015. Actually, believe it or not, I got this car to do Uber and Lyft. So uh, I also have a 1999 Civic EX. That's my uh, I call it my race car, and this is my show car. So the whole thing. As you guys can tell, it's strictly for show purposes. I'm not trying to make big power or anything like that. Just for show. Um, today, let me just quickly go through what I've done to it. Um, over here, I have a VIS carbon fiber hood. Uh, and then I also have some APR carbon fiber canards right here. Um, I have this uh, front splitter that's custom made by Z splitters. Um, yeah, some uh, spike lock nuts, uh, 7 cap by 6 speed. That wing back there, front part of the wing, diffuser, small bits here and there, uh, mainly dress up parts like I mentioned. Um, yeah, so this car is going to be my show car, that's why I'm building it for this year. Uh, hopefully, be able to take it to more car meets, car shows, get more exposure. Um, what got me into cars? So, uh, I came to Austin back in 2013, and I know nothing about cars when I first came here. Uh, I had my Civic, my 99 Civic, and that was my first car here. Um, started going out to more meets, you know, cars and coffee, and then meet people. And I was in the car, I guess, car game alone for maybe like a year. I didn't know anyone around me who knew cars or liked cars, but going to meets, I meet people, and then slowly I meet their friends, and you know, people meet people. So it was cool. Um, I, I would say car culture is uh, definitely a way to reflect your personality. Uh, for myself, personally, I feel like your dressing as well as your car, how you modify a car, really reflects your personality. Um, my car is, I'm trying to go for the really stealth look, so three uh, combination is copper fiber, gold, and black. That's the, basically the theme on the whole car. Um, yeah. What, uh, one question. Uh, was there ever a point where you knew that you were into cars? Was there like, a car you saw or a meet you went to? Or was it always kind of from when you were little that you were interested in? See, the funny thing is some people grew up being around cars. For me, that wasn't the case. Um, I grew up many years in Singapore and cars there are super expensive. I'm talking 250 grand for a Honda Civic. So it's very expensive. I didn't even think of modifying cars or affording a car. When I came here, I was like, cars are, you know, more affordable. And it's really going to meet and being, I guess, being Asian, you know, that I like Japanese cars. I'm biased to Japanese cars. Yeah, Ricers, you know. So I got my Honda, I got my Mitsubishi. Um, not gonna lie, I really like the Evos, how they look. That's why I got this guy, because, um, you know, I wanted to, I want a factory warranty on it. I could have got a used Evo 10 for the same price I paid for this brand new, but uh, sadly, I decided to go with a 10 year, 100,000 mile that this species gave me. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Sweet, awesome. Cool.
think that kind of laid the foundation of an interest that would kick in later on in life. Like, went to college, went to art school, started modifying cars on zero budget. I had a, had a Pontiac Sunfire, which was a little four-cylinder that nobody made aftermarket parts for, so I started making my own. Just out of a sheer will to do something that nobody had done before, and why not, and a little bit of ignorance. And that was fun. It was a wonderful feeling of, I'm gonna go and try to do something that is not supported by the aftermarket, and who knows if it's gonna work, it might work, it might not. So it just kind of rolled into you know, a lifelong passion of wanting to build something that I wanted for me, and not really because somebody else saw it. So I guess later on in life, like the car started getting bigger, I, Took a break for a little while, came back to it, decided that I wanted to start buying American cars. And I, was, I loved the way the Japanese drift cars looked, and I loved the race car, the carbon fiber, and low riders, and things that ride three inches above the ground that don't look like they should even roll. Uh, I wanted to take all that and kind of roll it into an American platform. People generally don't do that. Oh uh, yeah, so you talk about like what like you felt the car, car, car culture has like kind of given to you and how it's like helped you out and everything. Like I think the biggest thing that car culture has given me is a sense of family. No matter where I go, if I see somebody with a modified car, I don't know their name, I probably won't remember it. I'll remember their car, I'll remember what they did to it. I can talk to anybody about their car. It doesn't matter if it's an import, it doesn't matter if it's your 16 year old high school kid's first Civic when he put an intake on. He's super proud about that intake. It's a cool feeling to be able to communicate with complete strangers over a car, something that we see all the time, but they're doing something different with theirs. That's one of the things I love about the car culture. Uh, it's a wonderful sense of community. You know, I, I meet people, they're building something completely different from me. It's cool to see what they're building. The car culture taught me a lot about how to work with my hands, which is something that seems to kind of be going by the wayside. It was that, that hot rodder mentality that you had in the 50s of like, I'm going to do this myself. I don't have the money to pay somebody. I don't even know how to do it, but I'm going to teach myself. I'm going to learn something, and next time I try it, it'll be better. So I love that feeling. I love being able to look at a part that doesn't exist and try to make it because I want it. Not because I think anybody else is going to buy it. I want to make mirrors. I made mirrors. Don't need them. It came with mirrors. But I wanted different ones. I like them. It's fun. Could you talk about, about like uh, Stance Wars and like your experience with that and kind of like what you've done to your car uh, to kind of get into Stance Wars and all that stuff? So, Stance Wars in Houston, this year is the first year that it happened. And I, I can't say enough good things about that franchise as a whole. They put on amazing shows, they're well organized. Um, they have an application process. I had to apply for it and I was lucky enough to get top 100. Out of all the cars that applied, they chose 100 people that would represent the top 100 cars in Houston. That by itself is a huge honor. Um, it's a very humbling experience to me. Just look at that and be like, wow. I don't all the cars in Houston, I mean, GTRs and Lambos, whoever applied, they chose a Mustang on bags. That, that's pretty cool. Um, that's, that was really neat to be, to think that somebody took an interest in what I built and thought enough of it to let it into the show. Stan Sports as a whole doesn't make a big deal about trophies. It's not necessarily about going there to win a trophy. It's about the community and it's about your cars. And it's a very, friendly, fun experience. I really enjoy hanging out with people. The staff's amazing. It's run, I would say it's run by true enthusiasts doing it to have a place to go and to share that, not so much about you know, putting on a car show, turning a massive profit. So it was cool. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was great to go and park with all the rest of the cars, go and check out everybody else's build. 
thing that will always stick with me is uh, Mike, the guy who runs Stan's Force. They only give out two awards. They give out best best in show and best stance. Those are given, are given out publicly. All the rest of the awards are left on your car. He made a, a comment about it's not about the twenty dollar trophy that we give you. You're here. That is the prize. You're here. This is the community. On the way out of the car show, everybody that showed in there, he shook everybody's hand and said, thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part of the community. That action is something that will always stick with me. It's been one of the coolest experiences I've ever had. That it really was about the people, not who had the biggest and baddest car who dumped the most money into it. It's really cool. Get to teach you things, and I've 
learned a lot of different things and new things being with an actual team and a group. So, you know, modifying really brings you and a car together and, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much a relationship. So, you know. What do you think your car says, like, about you and, like, who you are? It kind of defines me as a person, you know. I like to, you know, of course drive fast and be like, oh, wow, who's that? Look at that, you know. Just being in school, you know, like to make a name for yourself and make a name for your car. And, People drive by and say, oh, there's Tyler, Tyler's here, or you know, stuff like that. But, um, you know, I think just the way she sits and the way she looks kind of defines me as a person. Um, badass, <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, it's, just, it's mean looking and it sits pretty. So. All right, yeah, that should be good look cool. Feeling the sun, party done, shadows walking home Walking with a game on You are my kind, classic mind And you look so fine mm -hmm. Loving the cold, smoking rolls See your fingers shake And getting through your heartbreak Some kind of free, same for me Don't know what I need It's not only us, it's 
just different groups coming together too to share the same the same the passion you know uh, every car the build is one of a kind so we see the sense of community yeah the sense of community is yeah that's it um, boy how would you say like your car is an expression of you it's odd <laughs> like like me yeah uh, just you know just the money I put into it is just different from maybe somebody else or you know uh, of course the people will hate it but I mean there's gonna be people out there that do that <laughs> but just the extension of me is just an oddball funny you know slow <laughs> I mean but hell I've done so much to this thing to to really stand out and be appreciated somewhere Austin's where it's at, you know, no matter where you come from, we, they accept you for what you've done to it, you know, so. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, what would you, what, like, what did you, what you say, like, you first really decided, like, you were involved in, like, the car scene, like, what kind of got you that point? Uh, uh, it was about 2010. I got into it, met a couple guys who started a group, and sure enough, it went from there, and now, I'm running with a group that's worldwide and the support from, you know, Japan to Germany, you know, we, we get support over Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. I never thought it'd be possible, but, you know, we're here now. I was little, you know. 
I've always admired the quality work, especially Japanese cars. Uh, I'm not ever going to buy any other car except Japanese. My next one's probably GTR. So, Nissan Power for sure. <laughs> and, um, I've been fixing cars since I could start driving, you know. At uh, first I had a Lancer, you know, and it's it been passed down to me, so I kind of, you know, one of, one of those really banged up cars already. So this is the first car I've ever bought under my name, so I'm very proud of that. And uh, definitely going to keep this car, hopefully we'll see the next plan. Uh, probably working on uh, twin turbo next, but got to save up the money for that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Can I talk about like, what your car like, means to you? And like, how, like, why you do the things that you do? I mean, you kind of heard about the Japanese oh, style, yeah, but definitely. like, uh, like what, what the car culture like, means to you, like, what it represents to you, so. So, with the car culture, it means a lot to me, because you can really express yourself uh, through the car, you know? Um, like they said, you know, actually speak louder than words. So most of the stuff I've done myself here, all the hours I put in, you know, and just make you feel proud of yourself. Every day you look at the car and just, it really shows a really great impression of who you are, how you take care of the cars, you know, the style of driving. Characteristics, you know, it really tells you a lot about yourself without even saying a word. You know? So that's what I really like about cars. You can just express yourself and have fun while you're doing it. That's all it is. Don't ever do do anything or fix up the cars for other people's uh, pleasure. You know, it should be just for you. You do that. You fix up cars for yourself and make you feel satisfied by yourself and don't worry about all the haters, you know. They're always going to be there, so don't let that get to you and don't let that stop you from following your dreams. Yep, that's it. Sweet. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Oh